My name is Anthony Apollo. The clock is counting down, so we'll get right to it. I'm here to talk about what it is we are doing in the U.S. state of Wyoming. First and foremost, disclaimers. These are my opinions. None of this is investment advice, and I do not speak for the Wyoming Stable Token Commission. I am simply the emissary. So a little bit about me. I began my tenure as the inaugural director of the Wyoming Stable Token Commission in September of 2023. Before that, I was not in government. I did not have any aspirations to be in government. The first half of my career was actually spent in traditional finance, working at Ernst Young and KPMG, predominantly focused on helping some of those big banks restructure or reconfigure their reporting in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis. So if you were here yesterday morning, where Emin was speaking with Brian over at Chorus One, they discussed the complexities of legacy systems within banks. I saw that firsthand in 2015 found out about Bitcoin at the same time, Ethereum had just launched, and I made a pretty clear pivot into the digital asset industry then. Since 2017, between my tenure at Consensus, as well as several, several personal startups I've launched, I've worked in tokenized intellectual property, real-time payouts to content creators, codified royalties via smart contracts, and at one point even did a compliant debt security token with an NBA player. If anyone knows who Spencer Dinwiddie is, then on the Brooklyn Nets, now the Dallas Mavericks, we worked to do a tokenized bond on Ethereum with stablecoin payouts on a monthly basis. I ended up moving to Wyoming because of the incredibly permissive framework they've created for digital assets, blockchain, and cryptocurrency. More on that in a second. And let's get into what the commission actually is. So one of those pieces of legislation that was passed in Wyoming was the Wyoming Stable Token Act back in March of 2023. And that did two important things. One is it created the Stable Token Commission, which is an actual government agency dedicated to creating the Wyoming Stable Token. It will be the first fiat-backed and fully reserved stable token to be issued by a public entity in the United States of America. And we're targeting a launch this July, so coming up pretty soon. To be specific about what the Wyoming stable token is, which we call WIST, it is statutorily mandated. That means we didn't have a CEO wake up on a Thursday, say, there's a lot of companies making money with stable tokens, let's issue one ourselves. This is the long-term intent of an entire state to get into this industry issue this token and begin that work. Beyond that, there are some familiarities here. A Wyoming stable token can be purchased or redeemed for one US dollar. It's backed by a pretty conservative bucket of cash, short-term US treasuries, and repurchase agreements thereof, those latter two being interest bearing, so that's the revenue generation potential here. And we have a mandate from the state legislature specifically the Select Committee on Blockchain, which is the piece, branch of the legislature that oversees our commission, to be on multiple public and permissionless blockchains. And you can see the statute is right there. So let's dig in a little bit into why Wyoming is doing this. The first thing I would point to is cohesion. As we'll see in a moment, we already have many laws on the books in the state around, again, broader Web3 concepts. And when you have the ability to pay your taxes with crypto, you have a digital asset registry in the Secretary of State's office, and you have DAO LLCs, a limited liability company structure that could accommodate decentralized autonomous organizations. It makes sense to have a mechanism by which you can transfer value across all these digitally native platforms that itself is digitally native and also stable, hence stable token. The second is revenue diversification. So Wyoming is an oil and gas state. That's how we make the preponderance of the state's revenues. However, that is a finite resource. So the question becomes, what happens after the dinosaur bones dry out? Which won't be in my lifetime, may not be in my grandchildren's lifetime, but will happen at some point. And as such, the state needs to be proactive in thinking about what comes next and how we can continue to generate revenues, including looking at new industries, and new technology to accommodate that. And perhaps more importantly, this is the state's second attempt at a fully reserved financial instrument. If anyone in the room is familiar with Caitlin Long, Custodia, familiar names? She ran, well, she does run, uh, Custodia, which is a special purpose depository institution. It's a specially chartered financial institution in the state of Wyoming. That is where your deposits are fully backed, and as such, you could also custody your digital assets there. Obviously, she's had some difficulties with the prior administration around getting that off the ground, as have the other SPDIs in the state. And this is critically, with the Wyoming Stable Token, a second attempt at creating a fully reserved financial mechanism. We believe, 
that you should know where your money is. And if a stable token is fully reserved, it's right there. We won't go through all of this, but just to give you an idea of what Wyoming is working on, there's over 45 pieces of legislation that have been enacted in the state so far since this endeavor began in 2016. I wanted to kind of show this visually to indicate this has been a long-term iterative process in the state. This is not a flash in the pan, kind of get rich quick thing because a lot of people are making monies on stable coins. Bless you, Morgan. Uh, beyond that, I want to be specific that we are not building a CBDC. We get that criticism sometimes. Sometimes it comes from the GOP majority whip Tom Emmer, but we actually passed in the most recent legislative session a bill specifically defining what a CBDC is as a federally issued stablecoin and precluding any state agencies from using it. So I want to make that as a clear distinction between what we're building and a CBDC. We won't go through all this either. I think those in the room are fairly well versed in how stable coins can be used from the big institutions to the end user, the retail user. But all of this to point out that this is not a stable coin specifically to be used within the four corners of Wyoming. This is meant to be domestic within the US, it's meant to be international, and it's meant to be used in DeFi as well, provided we have an appropriate compliance layer on that. So what do stable coins accomplish generally, and why are states interested? First and foremost, they are the most modern financial rails. Stable coins can facilitate global settlement. Those transactions can be assessed with a fee of less than a cent. They can settle in seconds rather than days, and they certainly mitigate counterparty risk. They've also emerged as the killer app for blockchain. You can see the rapid proliferation of the market supply, uh, as well as the fact that annual stablecoin transaction volumes have now surpassed that of both Visa and MasterCard in aggregate. There's also an important note here around U.S. debt, and this is where we get into the state angle a bit more. In the United States, we have $36 trillion of debt. We need buyers of that debt. Unfortunately, most of our foreign holders of that debt have been decreasing that, their share. It's downward sale pressure. We need something to fortify and rebuild that, uh, that market supply. Stable coins have emerged as a top 10 holder of U.S. debt in aggregate and that could help mitigate against the risk of a failed treasury auction. And for any of the nerds that look at this kind of activity, John, uh, if you were monitoring the bond markets last night, we had a pretty bad one. We have 20-year treasuries now with a 5% interest rate associated with it, Avery, you're late, uh, <laughs> because of this kind of issue. Another piece is U.S. dollar hegemony. The U.S. obviously wants the dollar to remain the world's reserve currency. That becomes difficult when you have powerful coalitions like the BRICS countries coming together and talking about their own version of a digital currency. There's issues where the former administration, because of their sanctions activity, resulted in the sale of dollar-denominated assets from many nation-state coffers. So this is another concern that we believe can be prevented or mitigated by having dollars readily available and globally transmissible. So now the interesting stuff. What does a U.S. state-issued stable token offer that incumbent and privately issued stable coins do not or cannot? So, first things first, this is a public good for the state of Wyoming. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're backing the stable coin with both cash and treasuries. Those treasuries bear interest, that is revenue for the state. While I would love to, you know, have the commission have availability of, let's say, a private jet that could go to all these great conferences all around the world every week, that's not what we're doing. On a quarterly basis, the income that's generated from the underlying reserves gets swept into the state's school foundation fund. So this is meant to fund schools. Long story short, it's for the kids. It's also very high in oversight. So the commission is chaired by the governor of the state of Wyoming, Mark Gordon. Governor Gordon, also importantly, has had previous tenure at the Federal Reserve particularly their member bank in Kansas City, so he understands this kind of structure. And we also are joined by the state treasurer and the state auditor on the commission. The meetings are held in public, all of our documents are public, the votes are public, and if you wanted to provide a public comment at the end of our monthly meetings, you are able to do that. We've also gone through an entire vendor procurement process in public. We did a blockchain selection exercise in public, and just to really drive that point home, 
All of that documentation is available on our website. So if you go to stabletoken.yo.gov and you want to look at the assessment we did for different blockchains, the objective criteria we used, and the results thereof, all of that is there. Stability. We are talking about a stable token, right? And while everyone is trying to maintain some semblance of stability, we actually have a legislative mandate to be over collateralized up to 2%. So if there's 100 Wyoming stable tokens in circulation, the expectation is we'll have $102 worth of cash and treasuries in reserve. Again, that is part of the law of the state of Wyoming. That is not a nice to have. That is not a board decision. That is the law. Distribution. So Wyoming is issuing the Wyoming stable token as a sovereign entity. So we're not doing this through a bank. We're not doing it through a trust. It is the state itself. And as such, we believe that we can be global functionally from day one. While we've seen some of the incumbents struggle with having to set up offices all over the world to comply with different frameworks, we think out the gate we can be everywhere. Transparency. So I want to talk here for a moment about rulemaking. When we operate the Wyoming Stable Token, again, we can't make the rules up on the fly. Anything that touches the public has to have a rule set promulgated behind it. So again, the legislature makes the statute, makes the laws. Our agency has ability to do its own rulemaking. Predominantly, those will be two critical ones for this type of conversation. One is reserves management, how the dollars go in and out and how they move. And the second is token treatment. That's going to cover off on minting and issuance, burning and redemption. Any other features along the way have to be part of a public process there is a 45-day public comment period every time we want to put rules into play. And just to give you an idea of how open this all is, if you wanted to provide commentary on our reserves management rules, those are live on our website. You can go to our Notion page, take a look, review. If you have comment, please do provide. Privacy. So in the state of Wyoming, we care greatly around privacy. We already have a rule on the books that prohibits the disclosure of private keys in a civil or criminal proceeding. We can't compel speech as a state. Beyond that, we are looking at zero-knowledge tech. We're looking at homomorphic encryption as a way to get into this, what I refer to as the Goldilocks zone, which is how can we obfuscate sender and receiver addresses as well as amounts in the public chain but still give the commission visibility into some of those transactions to make sure nefarious actors are not using Wyoming stable tokens for illicit purposes. And to that extent, if you had a chance to speak with Nick Musalem or Will over Ava Cloud about the Avasi solution, that's something that we are looking at quite carefully in this capacity. And let's talk a little bit about constitutionality. This is a bit of a recent endeavor. We had a meeting of our state legislature last week where this has come up. Because as we're putting together the Wyoming stable token, we are looking at frameworks from different jurisdictions, as well as the terms and conditions of the current incumbent stable token issuers. We've seen issues in the past where organizations like PayPal, admittedly pre-token, but during the pandemic, updated their terms and conditions to say, if you, if you, use, uh, mis if you deploy misinformation on our platform, we are going to unilaterally deduct $2,500 from your account. And yes, that went back and forth a couple of times, but that did happen. It is my personal opinion, as a state, we are not able to do that because that would be a contravention of the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Second piece, Second Amendment, the right to bear arms in the United States. If you go to circles, terms and conditions, there are prohibited transactions. Firearm purchases are in there. I do not believe that we as a state can prohibit that transaction. Fourth Amendment, the state cannot perform a legal search and seizure. There has to be a rationale for that. This is the problem around interdiction, where other issuers can potentially go and freeze and seize your tokens. The reasons for them to do that are perhaps ill-defined. To be clear, we do intend to have freeze and seize capabilities for the Wyoming stable token. Again, we have to make sure malicious actors are not using WIST. That being said, I believe we would not be able to do that without a valid court order, warrant, or subpoena. We can't do that. We are not an enforcement agency. We can't do that because, you know, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and felt like freezing some money in an address one day. And then finally, the 10th Amendment in the U.S. leaves determinations to the states if the federal government apparatus has not defined things yet. And uh, I'm not a lawyer, so if there's any constitutional lawyers in here, just please find me after this. Uh, but this is where we're talking about the Genius Act and the Stable Act 
first of all, they're not actually promulgated yet, but this is where we would have a carve out to move forward ourselves. We will be a first mover in that capacity. So where are we now? First, we are wrapping up our procurement process, which been, has been months long. We did seven different RFPs that cover the full life cycle of the Wyoming stable token, from the actual token issuance to the reserves, internal controls, audit, et cetera. That is hopefully wrapping up in the next couple of days. Secondly, alpha testing. If you're a resident of Wyoming, you have a digital wallet and want to start playing around with the test WIST, we've already launched on seven different test nets, including the Avalanche Fuji network. You can certainly do so, and we'll be getting user acceptance testing and end, end integration testing off the ground in the immediate future. And then finally, we are instantiating a pilot program with Wyoming domiciled entities. So for these companies with existing blockchain-based capabilities, we're looking to figure out how they can use WIST to cause more efficiency and sell their transactions faster, generate higher returns. One of the companies we're working with is uh, Hashfire with John Belitsky. It's a online contracting platform similar to DocuSign, has all those features, but also can help make a liquid market for those receivables. And then in terms of future initiatives, a couple things that came out of our meeting with the legislature last week. First is we will be looking at our ability to distribute yield or interest to the end holders of Wyoming stable tokens. We've seen a lot of that activity go offshore. You have Agora and Mountain in the Bahamas. Uh, you've seen that activity be limited to accredited investors through things like the Buildal Fund through BlackRock. If anyone's got $5 million to invest in stable coins, go for it, but it doesn't necessarily scale. But we as a state may have exemptions to securities rules under the SEC, and we are looking into that quite intently. Second is the Digital Asset Authority. While we are the Wyoming Stable Token Commission now as a government agency, there is interest in expanding the scope of our responsibilities. That may include, to the last point here, real world assets. The state of Wyoming is rich in land and livestock, oil and gas, gold and silver, rare earths, and uranium. There is interest in moving a lot of those resources on chain. I've got about 50 seconds left, so I can probably take one question and then we will wrap things up. Anyone? Must have been very thorough this morning then, huh? <laughs> Sir. Let me give you the microphone real quick. Do you think you would be followed rapidly by other states in the US? Great question. Um, all of our tech is, will be open source. I would expect that it'll all be out there. So from a technical perspective, it's pretty much copy paste. What I'd like to kind of confer here is this has been a long time coming in the state of Wyoming. You saw a few moments ago, this has been an iterative process for many years. I do believe other states could potentially do this in time. I think they would have to work very rapidly through a legislative process to accomplish that. But I think we would rather partner with other states to do issuance through the Wyoming stable token, perhaps on their behalf, and figure out what that looks like as we move forward, because that'd be a way for them to rapidly onboard to a sovereign issued stable token in the immediate future. I'm out of time. Video, back to you.